really lucky to be living on the country of the Mumurumina people. Um, you know, unfortunately those old fellows are no longer here um, as a result of, of uh, being dispossessed and, and invasion and colonisation. Um, but, um, you know, we, we're privileged to be living on their country. Um, I'm Teresa Sainty. I am a Pakana woman, uh, which means I'm a Tasmanian Aboriginal woman. I think you'd be hard pressed to find um, any um, Kanigong, any of the native pig face. Um, it's mostly um, the South African version. You know, we don't want to lose all of our natural areas, no matter where we are, no matter where we're living um, in Lutuwira, and certainly down here, because that's what draws people here. So we need to make sure that our, our um, reserves and, you know, our bush areas, our natural bush areas are, um, are protected. Hello, I'm Alcrum. I am Travis Gudgeon and I live in this community we call Sorel. Well, we've got the skate park behind us, dog park to our, my right. you got the left, we've got an oval with cricket, soccer, footy. I think it's a pretty good place, but you know, there's kind of those little areas that need kind of fixing. Well, there's obviously a lot of trash being dumped in rivers and all sorts of stuff like this. So we really kind of mi minimalise that, I reckon it can be really good. G'day, I'm Doug. I am a student of Sorrel School and I live in Sorrel. If I were the mayor of Sorrel, I would probably try and tighten down on some... Hmm, probably shouldn't say that. Hopefully with the bypass, it will quieten a lot of the road traffic down and keep a lot more cars off the road, make traffic a bit more bearable. Um, hopefully it doesn't turn into a great big city. Hopefully it just stays a nice, tight-knit community it is. So my name's Casey and I'm a member of the Colton Park Surf Life Saving Club. Um, I've been a member of this surf club since I was about nine or ten years old, but I have forever been around the club. Every time I drive into the car park now with the new renovation, I just can't believe what Christine and the, um, the committee have been able to achieve in like COVID years as well. It hasn't exactly been the easiest time to do a whole club renovation. For us to actually hold not only our own club events, but f events for the community. Having a space for everybody to come together is going to be something I think special that we can provide. You know, the skills, the memories, the relationships, they're all just so valuable and the connection that you form with the community, um, it just lasts forever and it, it's so, so special. Just approach him, all you need to do is get the tube and then just unravel it and then wrap it around him, clip it up, just tell him to hold on and then just swim all the way back in. And then what we really do need My name's Laura and I co-own Bambone Restaurant with my partner Tim and we are located in Brim Creek. The view is breathtaking and the light, the lifestyle, the coastline, the produce here is amazing. We always had a vision of doing something great within this business um, and we've just stuck true to that vision. Um, it's been enormously hard work, it's still enormously hard work 
but you apply yourself to something you believe in so much and, and I think good things will come of that. My name's Mark Prestige. I'm the Brigade Chief at Wattle Hill. I've been here for 25 years nearly. What I like about this place is the people. Um, a lot of the people get on really well together. It's a great community and uh, you wouldn't want to live anywhere else. The whole station's volunteers. Yeah, everybody. yeah. <laughs> we're all driven by volunteers. We, we all put in our own time. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, how long we have to do it for. The Dunnally fires we're here are around the clock. When we leave here, I make sure we come back. All of us. Because that's the most important part. had a wonderful life, wonderful life. I've been very lucky. I was very, very happy to see all those wonderful people rushing up to give me a hug. <laughs> it was lovely. That was for my birthday, to be a hundred. My name is Eileen Brooker and I'm an artist and I have here some of my drawings and this is my um, art gallery where I keep my larger works. Tons of portraits. You see how much I like drawing people? It's um, a lovely little town and a lot of people know each other. So um, it's uh, very personal, I feel, you know. I had a, a card from a girl, a woman, whom I taught as a child at Farn, a lovely card, and she said to me, you are the best teacher I've ever had. You taught me how to be myself and to do what I want to do, not to be like other people. My name is Rupert, I'm from Dodgers Ferry. I love living here because I've got lots of friends here and I can do the stuff I like. <laughs> It's a really nice place because there's lots of bush for young people to play around in. If I was the mayor, I would make it so there's more properties, but it wouldn't get rid of any of the bushland. It's very nice because people support you and, it's, and there's lots of kids around to play with and stuff like that. You're it. Oh, now it. It's good for young people to live here because there's lots of parks and beaches and places to play and everybody's friendly around here. What do you love about where you live, Winnie? Well, I love Georges Ferry because of all the beaches and I like how it's not very developed like lots of other suburbs. Quite on set. Action. I would like to be, when I grow up, a triple threat, which is singing, dancing and acting. Stand up and be counted. Everybody now! Stand up, stand up and be counted. I
My name's Dion Berry. Um, I've been living in the um, broader or greater Sorrel area um, for the last seven years. We've benefited from being able to just live our values and um, the community has surprised me how welcoming they've been and how on board. I think people are discovering that Sorrel is really much more diverse, much more uh, inclusive uh, than perhaps historically or stereotypically it's been viewed. Um, so yeah, a lot of up and coming businesses. I mean, you just have to look at how many new homes have been built in this area in the last few years. It's been massive. Um, all of those people contribute to our community. You know, they, they either work here or they have young people who go to school here. Um, yeah, and the, you know, new businesses and, and things that are coming into town. It's just, it's fantastic, yeah. Seymour. I make surfboards under the label Sea Monster. Well, yeah, that's where it all started down at Marion Bay. Um, my dad, you know, bought a house at Brim Creek, like just before I was born, and that's, you know, it's it's where I grew up, and and it's where I learnt to surf. At some point, I realised if I'm going to make surfboards, I need to. I need to go where the industry is. Like I'm always just going to be a self-taught backyarder if I stay here. And um, that's when I moved up to, to the Byron area. And I've, I worked between Byron and the Gold Coast for maybe about eight years. Um, it, I worked for some amazing board makers and did all these different factories. And then at some point I realised I could go back to Tassie and, and do it. That, was, that sowed the seed, I think. Yeah, it's just a great place to make boards. I, I love it. There are people that are coming here because they just love the lifestyle and, and they want to they want to live more connected to be, be, you know being close to the ocean. I can imagine in uh, 10 years time or 20 years time the surf's going to be a lot more crowded. That's one thing we all have to be a bit more patient. You know, maybe I don't have to catch as many waves. You know, maybe other people might be having to think about that as well. It's, you know, when you grew up here, you, you were spoiled. Hi, I'm Ken Gatehouse from Mayfield Wattle Hill. I've lived in uh, the Wattle Hill area all of my life. So what I love about this place is uh, where, where I live at the moment, uh, it's locality to Shrell and Hobart is quite uh, feasible, it's fairly close. We are uh, we're left, on a, left on our own, it's, it's peaceful. Who well, as a local, well, what it takes to be a local is to uh, be a bit involved with uh, the community. Uh, I've uh, coming up to 49 years as a member of the Lions Club of Shrell, was the district governor for Lions in Tasmania. I've played football with Shrell, Copping and all the uh, Fawcett. We're now playing bowls and I've played bowls since 1976 and I've run some championships with that. But it's not me, it's the people that you're with and if you're with them they will help you. I'm Dawn Gatehouse and um, I'm married to Ken. The farm's our way of life, but it doesn't hasn't made a living for us while we were rearing children, so we both worked part-time. To me, um, because I grew up on a farm and we're still farmers, um, it's the community around the town more than the people in the town. We know the people. When we were kids, we could probably tell you who lived in every house in Sorrell. Not that we'd been in every house, but we knew who lived there. Nowadays, we've got no idea. But around the country, on the farms, we generally do know who lives on every farm. We've got a connection with the country community. Uh, 
Uh, my name's Scott Rawson. Um, been in Sorrell for the last uh, 21 years. Um, involved in junior football um, and have had a lot to do with athletics over the years as well. All I want is the best for the kids in the community and that's why I get involved. I just, yeah, I want the kids to be able to come to one place, feel safe, make it family orientated, friendly, somewhere where they think that, you know, I don't have to go anywhere else, I've got everything we need here. So, yeah, and that's what I've always wanted. You still have your Sorrell and your Dodgers senior games, uh, senior footballers, but we joined the Sorrell and Junior Dodgers Juniors together to make one team for the South East Giants, which has been quite successful. Here we've got the South East Suns Women's Football Club, we have Sorrell Football Club, and we've got the South East Giants Football Club. But then again, you've also, of course, here you've got South East Netball. But we do have that South East purpose of um, to bringing people from the community from Tribe under Orford down to the peninsula as well. So we cater for all those, those kids. Hi, my name's Marsha Batchelor. Um, I'm president of the South East Netball Association. A proud president that founded the club eight years ago. And we have 26 teams that compete in our winter roster and we have over 20 teams that compete in a ladies social roster and 20 teams that compete in an after school roster. So overall we have approximately 500 members. Um, so, you know, with having the brand new stadium, the multi-purpose uh, stadium that's been built here at Pembroke Park, that will give our club so much opportunity for us to secure elite players, start developing, offering uh, pathways for our juniors um, to be able to play at the highest level they can in Tasmania. Um, and, you know, with these facilities, um, it just, yeah, opens up lots of opportunities for uh, our netballers. All right, off we go. Actually, this is where I started my, my work. <laughs> so this is the centre in a way. When you look at it, of course the centre is in the middle. So the centre visually, okay, you go, okay, the centre is here. Rolling. Okay, I am uh, Maurizio Alejandro Arias. Um, I'm the artist that did paint this mural at the, at the men's shed in Sorel. I used to be homeless uh, here in, in, in this location. I mean, for what, you know, I mean, if I really look back personally, uh, you know, I was a very, very broken person. I, 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 to be here today and doing this, you know, I feel. Uh, that there is a community and there is people caring for each other and still and you know within the artistic frame to be able to voice uh, and express I think it's great I'm so grateful to be honest I am very grateful to this opportunity energy energy <laughs> you know a way to to represent energy because how, how the hell do you represent energy you know it's, it's very abstract I'm Peter Kelly and I'm president of the Sorrell Historical Society. Most of the holdings of the Historical Society concentrate on that, on that period, um, that early colonial period. That was a period where, where Sorrell became established as a town and Macquarie visited and Sorrell was one of the Macquarie towns and laid out in that nice Macquarie grid orderly fashion. But it's really only in the last few years that Sorrell's expanded enough to, to um, sort of be as large as, as Macquarie envisaged. There was a long, long period that we can barely comprehend of Aboriginal occupation. And it's taking us a long time to learn about and appreciate that long, long uh, history 
um, it wasn't considered history because it, it was not recorded in writing. Aboriginal history is oral history, um, and and it, and, it, and it was suppressed. Um, it's being revived now, but it's it takes um, people of my generation a long time to to process that long period of Aboriginal history. Well, with reconciliation, there needs to be a melding of stories uh, so that the, the whole story is told. We recognise in the present all that's gone in in the past, not just, not just certain versions of what's gone in the past, not just certain perspectives, but we include many more perspectives into, um, into the story that we have in the present and continue those stories into the future. Uh, my name's Warren Mason, I'm a proud Yurralaroi man from far western New South Wales. I've been living in the Sorrel Council area for 15 years now. I know it will displace my home. Um, I'm proud to be here. And I've created a small business called Tin Camp Studios, which is a sharing of music and story. Come sit with me down by the river. Cause I've been way too long. I'm in the telling my story through music. Um, it's going well at the moment. It's getting it's very well received. Um, I'm very privileged and honoured to be in that space to be able to tell that story. Um, I know that my parents weren't allowed to tell that story, so it's like that's I feel like it's my responsibility to tell the story of my truth. It's, uh, I'm not telling stories for anyone else really, it's like, even I tell my stories for my own healing. Sunrise, first light hits the ground with a smile. Big skies, cockatoos cry, wedge tails soar high. Malia. I'm Jess Roberts and I'm a unit leader with Sorrel Girl Guides. I've been with Sorrel Guides for about two years now. At Guides we are girl led, so that means the girls decide what games, activities and adventures we choose to take as a unit, um, which could range from camping to rock climbing to arts and crafts. We fill that gap for members which don't really do sports or aren't into netball and footy. Um, it gives them something else to do and something that isn't just focused on the one subject. We do a broad range of activities. As a leader, we find it really rewarding to see the girls develop their confidence and grow in themselves throughout their guiding journey. We're very fortunate to have the role that we do and to be able to give the girls the opportunity to grow and develop their confidence. Oh, my name's Gwen Scott. I live at Midway Point, but I am a member of the Cyril Bowles Club and I have been a member of this club for 30 years. I hope it's gonna get there. I'm a life member of this club and I have been oh. the president. Oh, that's not bad. I play bowls sometimes four days a week. I just love the bowls club. Yes, I like the way Cyril has changed because you know, we, had, we had nothing. When I first came here 60 years ago, we had a couple of little supermarkets and who would have thought we would have traffic lights, supermarkets, we've got nearly everything in Sorrel now. You don't need to really go away anywhere to, you can get everything you need here. 
Keep going. I've been at the Bowls Cup for 30 years and it's taken me all this time to win the consistency, the patron's plate, the ladies fours, the ladies triples, the ladies singles, and then I had to play the man singles champion and he beat me by one. We rolling? Yep. Hi, my name's Alan Wagg and uh, I'm a teacher at Sorrell School. I've been here for 19 years. I've been teaching for 35 years. Um, I'm sitting in a, in a yarning circle at Sorrell School. Uh, this yarning circle we call Nina Mina Tanapri, which is, means you and me learn. It's Palawakani words. Sorrell in 10 years, well, we'll have a new school and that's going to be great. Um, the school, the process of, of getting a new school, it's been enormous. There's been a massive amount of uh, consultation. Um, so we're going to get a school which is going to be unique. It's going to represent our, our history. That, for, for example, a lot of the schools being re rebuilt, but the Pioneer School here and and the uh, Aboriginal Learning Place here, Nina, Nina Mino Tamatri, uh, is is not going to be changed. We see so many kids drive past of a morning uh, heading into town for what they perceive to be a better education because what, what that does is, is it leaves the kids who are here with, a, with the impression that oh we're not as good as the kids that leave, that we're the kids, that we're the residual kids that have been left behind and in some way we're not as good and our school's not as good and and it's not until they actually get to compete with other schools and mix with other other kids do they get over that and they realise that that's not really true. So my wish for Sorrell is, is that somehow we could get past that so that kids don't come at, at, into our high school at least for, with, a, with this deficit thinking. about seeing something develop. Uh, if it's wrong, I change it. If it's, not, if it's right, great, I feel great. So it's, it's just, it's, it's really good for the soul, I suppose, in a way. I think any creative measures are. My name is Saki Itchens, I live in Fawcett and I'm part of this Sorrell community, which is a beautiful place and I love living here. Well, the council, the Sorrell Council has now um, promised to build a, an art and cultural centre. A part of that, of that um, block, a part of it is a carriage shed, which has sta been standing there for a couple of hundred years, and that's finally now being um, upgraded, and beautifully so, keeping its original structure there intact, pretty much. Um, so that's a real plus for the community, because there we can start, maybe in that, in that uh, space, we can start holding a few exhibitions and, and a few other group things. The feel and the vibe of the community is always very friendly and I think this is, this is what makes Sorrell. My name's Amy, I run Southern Fields with Ben, my partner. Um, we're in Fawcett and we've farmed here for about 15 years. Ben's father and him had worked on and run Houston's farms and there was just an opportunity to move out of the fresh cut salads into icebergs and for Ben and I to start a business together. So a large irrigation scheme was put in from the Derwent River and it has a pipeline that's 80 k's long that brings water throughout the whole Sorrell area and ends at this farm. 
And that is really the reason why we now see investments in um, vineyards and other vegetable farms in the area. So it's meant a lot um, to have that water. Um, over the time that we've been farming here, I've developed a bigger connection to this place as I hear people's stories. And one of the stories was from uh, employees great-great-grandfather's diary who referred to this whole strip of land from Fawcett to Sorrell as the Golden Mile because it was the wheat production for Hobart. I'm um, Jo from Bike and Scooter Stop in Sorrell. Uh, we've been here since 2017 and I've lived in the area my whole life. Talk about that role that you have for young people. Yeah, well we certainly try and have a great influence on the young kids in the area by trying to keep them engaged encouraging kids all the time if you're at the skate park if you're just watching or if you're just looking and you and just hanging out with your mates and you're not necessarily a rider it doesn't matter just support each other look after each other but if you're down there riding Ted and the boys from here are always happy to show them and teach them and as long as they're willing to listen and that keeps that age group from little to the older boys and it and make sure then that all the kids have respect for each other and we try and encourage that all the time um, because I think it's really important that they do look after each other and they have respect for each other. How do you see Sorrell in 10 years? That... Oh well I, I love to see Sorrell in 10 years time just thriving. I think it's at this point that it's going to just really start to grow um, and once we, we've got the people moving in now we're going to need the infrastructure of commercial properties to be able to have the unique little businesses and, and the services and the facilities that the locals will need and I think that can only grow um, and in 10 years time it'll be such a central little hub. Now the chooks are going to start. <laughs> right. Uh, hi, I'm Moya Sharp. I'm down here at the Pioneer Village, which I set up uh, to uh, promote the history, the local history of the district. And uh, I taught here for over 40 years. Oh, there's got to be a skirt there of some sort. Yeah. And a hat. <laughs> and a short. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Not only that, a fit me. Well, a large part of my uh, teaching career was teaching about the environment. Uh, and I seriously think the best way to do it, to educate the students, was to get them out. And uh, we created many, many projects in Sorrell District. And I think the students really enjoyed that active participation of planting trees and pulling out weeds and realising how they can help our planet and how they can use adults really take these messages and uh, ideas of how to look after our planet into the future. But we can't stop development, it's happening. People don't want to live in this area, why wouldn't you want to live in this area? Look at it. Satellite, come down and show me what you got. Promise me and promise me a lot. Oh, feels like the summer is a coming round. 